I've got all my pennies. I put them back in the jar. And now I'm going to shake them and mix them all up. And then I'm going to dump them out on the table. The shaking of the jar represented a mixing of the pennies, and it represented a half-life of radioactive decay. The half-life is the amount of time it takes for half, statistically speaking, half of the uranium to decay to lead. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a look, and I'm going to organize my pennies into two piles, a pile of heads up and a pile of tails up. Okay, so in this experiment, a heads-up penny represents uranium-235. Uranium-235 is radioactive. It occurs in igneous rocks that form from magma or lava, and it's going to decay to lead-207. So the amount of time it takes for uranium-235 to decay to lead-207, or a population or amount of lead uranium-235 to decay to lead-207, the amount of time it takes for half is 0.7 billion years. So that's obviously known as the half-life. So again, the pennies that are heads up are going to represent uranium-235. U is the symbol for uranium. 235 is the atomic number of this isotope, protons and neutrons. PB is the symbol for lead. 207 is the number of protons and neutrons, again. So every round, from starting with round zero, or the time at which the rock initially formed, the igneous rock initially formed, as we go from round 0 to round 1, 0.7 billion years go by. And as we go from round 1 to round 2, another 0.7 billion years and so on, all the way down through this process. Alright, so after you've started with 128 pennies and you shook them in the container um, and you counted them all, what you're going to record here is the number of heads that are still remaining. And so out of 128 to start with, record your actual data. Um, and so let's say that you had 70 heads remaining after the first round. Okay, well, what is the expected number of unchanged pieces? Okay, well, let's think about that. If we started with 128, I would expect half of 128 to be heads. So that would be 64. That's how I would fill out this column. The heads up are the uh, actual number of unchanged pieces, or the parent isotope atoms. These are still considered uranium atoms. The tails up are now considered the lead 207 atoms. And so those are now out of play because they're no longer radioactive. We're no longer consider considering them uh, for future rounds. So only heads up pennies will continue on. And so, so only place the remaining 70 heads back in the container and discard any of the tails, just put them off to the side. This is representing yet another half-life of radioactive decay. In the instance of uranium-235 going to lead-207, this takes 0.7 billion years. That's a lot of time. 0.7 billion years of time for another half-life. Okay, You're going to dump those out again and once again organize them into piles of heads and tails. So after round two, you had 70 pennies to start with that were heads up, and perhaps at round two now we have, let's say, 32 pennies remaining that are still heads up. How many would you have expected? Again, I'm not going to take half of 70. I'm going to take half of 64 for my expected column. So continue filling that out, and that would be 32. So I'm actually right exactly what I would have expected for this. Place the remaining 32 heads up pennies back in the container. Shake them again for round three. Okay. Once again, separate out the heads and the tails, and then count up how many we have that are still heads, and so maybe I'm down to 15 or so, 
And what is expected? Expected is half of 32, which is 16. So you can continue filling this out. 16, 8, 4, and so on. And continue filling this out with your actual data, whatever you happen to get. Okay, now on this page we're going to graph our data. And here's how I would mark the axis. Um, this would be the round, so round 1, 2, I guess that would be 0, 3, 4, and so on. And then on the y-axis, I would have a uh, number of pennies, so I just, I guess, would just count up 10, 20, and so on. And for this graph, I'd like you to have your actual and expected numbers graph. So, you know, use a different color for each line, and so graph your actual and expected numbers. Okay, so why were your results a little bit different from expected results? Um, you know, you might remember this from genetics as sophomores in biology that um, you're dealing with probabilities, so probabilities can tell you likely uh, results, but they can't predict. They can't, um, they can't guarantee any results. Uh, number two, did you have an easier time guessing or predicting results when there are a lot of pennies in the cup or when there are a few and why? Um, yeah, I guess you could answer this multiple ways. I would answer this and say I think it's actually easier to predict results, generally speaking, when there's a lot of pennies. Um, you're you're going to get closer to the expected probability when there's a lot of events occurring. So if you have 100 pennies, um, you know, you, you might end up with 53 or 55 or, or, or 48 um, heads up, and you're going to be pretty close to that expected 50. Versus if you have one penny left, you might guess heads, but it might be tails. You'd be totally wrong. You only have a 50% chance of being right at all. So you're either totally right or totally wrong. And then we're going to fill out the chart below concerning the expected results. So remember, we're starting with 128 uranium atoms, which were the heads up. The ratios are reducible when you get to ratios. And remember, one half-life decay is... 0.7 billion years. Therefore, if you have two half-lives, it's 2 times 0.7 and 1.4. Okay, so in round one, number of uranium-235 atoms, remember we're dealing with expected, would be 64. Number of lead-207 atoms, um, if you had 64 of the 128, so you take 128, minus 64, uh, you're going to have had 64 tails that you would expect as well. Okay, so what's my ratio of uranium-235 to lead-207? Okay, the ratio is 64 to 64, but ratios reduce, so that's a 1 to 1 ratio. Okay, Number of half-lives I'm dealing with, it says right at the top here, it says number of half-lives is one half-life, okay? So, that's just one. And then time in millions or billions of years, okay? So, remember that the time we're dealing with um, for one half-life is 0.7 billion years. So, time, 0.7, I'll just do 0.7b. 0 0.7. Okay, so let's take a look at the next column. Round two, two half-lives. Okay, well, a half-life definition is you're going to take, you're going to end up with half of what you started with. So if we had, well, remember we started with 128. That was at round zero. And then at round one, the 128 split to 64. And now 64 is going to split again to 32. Well, we can go this way too. 32 is going to split again to 16. 16 is going to split again to 8. And then obviously 4. And here, our equation remains the same. So we have to take whatever we have here, 128, and we're going to subtract 32. Okay, so we're going to get 96. Expected lead, 207 atoms. Okay, what about, what about the ratio of uranium-235 to lead-207? What about that? Okay, well, our ratio now is 32 
to 96. Okay, that might not seem reducible, but it is. If you divide each of those numbers by 32, it's going to work. So that's going to end up to be a 1 to 3 ratio of uranium to lead. Number of half-lives, well, again, it just says right here, two half-lives. Okay, well, time in millions or billions of years is 0.7 times 2, which is 1.4 billion years. Okay, so I filled out most of the chart. Go ahead and see if you can fill out the rest of it here using the same kind of logic.